Ladies and gentlemen, the UMG $200 minimum. Taking place here on April 17th. Of course, myself, Landon, Lando Sanders, live here in studio as we're hopping in here to our first semifinal matchup of the night. Taking place between MG, aka Midnight Gaming, and current defending champions of our $200 minimums, Major Gaming, Gizmo, and Frosty, showing exactly why they currently hold that title so dear. But, uh, of course, these guys did end up winning our prior turn, which actually took place on Thursday. And of course, uh, this current tournament usually takes place on Thursday as well. We just happen to change it to Tuesday due to uh, players' travel and accommodations to them when it comes to uh, Cedarville, Seattle, which is obviously going on this weekend. So we have to change the date from uh, Thursdays for this week to obviously Tuesday. Of course, things will go back to normal in the prior weeks, but we just like to do it for events and whatnot to try to cater to the players get an opportunity to practice especially when it comes down to uh obviously land tournament so with that in mind like i said the previous tournament winners in mazer gaming looking to try to hold on to their title of course finding themselves in the semifinals as it stands this has really been a team who has been involved with our 200 hundred dollar minimum tournaments for a very long time now they were kind of finding themselves facing off against teams like vex gaming even teams like midnight as well in their past and kind of having some issues from time to time and you know they were working on certain game modes they would have some you know kind of game three losses or, or even like a really close search and destroy loss where they'd get eliminated from a tournament but overall a lot of the times they were considered to be a top two top three team in, in the tournament despite getting eliminated in one of the earlier rounds so you really can't count out major gaming and you know multiple game modes they're solid when it comes in the hard point their entire team is really mixed up and really made up of prior search and destroy star talent the only thing that I could really see them maybe struggling in would be like a uh, would be a CTF, but despite that though, you got a really solid team when it comes down to major gaming. But you also take a look at the other side of the board, right? You have Midnight. Midnight just comes off, just come out a victory, taking down a Hydra Gaming in a hot 2-0 where they were able to win the hard point in a decently dominant way by, by about 47 seconds and uh, closed out a search and destroy to remember. Uh, six rounds to two. Of course, that one was on USS Texas. And basically every single kill with the sniper rifle was found from Glory. Finished off 14-3. and three. Like I said, every kill basically coming with the sniper rifle. I mean, just absolutely unreal play. Do not want to face off against this team when it comes into search and destroy. But it uh, should be an interesting one to watch. The hard point, of course, is beginning to look fairly close off the beginning as two nearly line up for glory. No kills get found, but at least they do have the current spawns in their favor. When it comes down to Bunker, Profizi locking down some free seconds as no one really able to get past that 50-yard line of the map from Mazer Gaming as now they're going to go ahead and set up shop, set up camp when it comes down to East Road. Of course, a lot more difficult of a hard point to hold, a lot more, of, a lot more difficult to grasp. Uh, really when it comes down to Arden Forest, the main hard point that you really want to be locking down is going to be Bunker, and that's currently the why, that's currently why we see the lead that we see currently for MG. They lock down basically every single second inside of Bunker. That gives them the solid advantage that they currently possess for the time. Looking on, though, I don't believe we have any streaks for any players, so it would be uncharacteristic to see these get rocked normally on East Road, but Nades, Tactical is going to be flying as it stands, it's still half the hard point to go, and no time really going toward anyone right now, but not if Zaptius has anything to say about it. Picks up three kills in a row. Him and Fatal starting to light it up. Six combined for the Nutmeg at seven, nearly makes it eight. All four, all four players coming toward the back side of East Road. Midnight Gaming having a few errors from time to time, absolutely getting dismantled for a short time in this match, but trying to pick it up as Profizi Nice jump shot into a double kill, as right now it is a eight kill streak as a team that quickly gets ended. But solid response coming in from Midnight Gaming as they do it exactly when they need to. Notice, right? As Profizi takes a look at the uh, at a miss stun there, but notice, right? When the team goes on a streak, Mazer goes on what was it, like a, an eight streak or a six streak, something on those lines between two players. There's 13 seconds left in East Road. They don't really gain any time from that. When you see Midnight Gaming go on a streak, right, they possess the new hard point. They come off of spawn. A few players start to go on streaks, and then they take over the hard point. I mean, it just kind of goes to show how important streaks are as a team. As it, Just as I say that, rather, an eighth streak gets granted toward the side of Mazer Gaming as well. So kind of going back and forth as a team collectively. Both squads going on runs 
But to, as it stands for the time, it is MG with the current advantage on their plates. But scrap seconds grabbed on side of Cave. A little bit of a better showing right now for Mazer. As we'll see how they vend to try and retake the hill. Two players need to join alongside the other two to really make a retake happen. But Phantoms, one of the many layers watching the back lines, it ends up getting taken down. Of course, if you didn't see our last series featuring at midnight, you notice a pretty interesting gamer tag. This one is actually going to be Stamino. Of course, previous player for GGEA Blue actually gets added toward the midnight roster in place of Pimby. And in my last series, I was kind of talking and really discussing and saying, why I was such a big fan of that change is really because of the roles. Because essentially in the game now, you do have the flex player, you have the two SMGs and the main assault rifle. Essentially with the old uh, Midnight Gaming team, you kind of have Profizi, who's going to be your main SMG from time to time. Uh, you know, it was obviously going to be Glory, who's kind of the flex player for this team. And really, you know, in past, you had Phantoms, who's the main AR, and Pemby also, who's the main AR as well. So you kind of had two guys playing the same role. You have three guys who at one time could rock an assault rifle. And, you know, in, in Call of Duty history, or at least as far as this game is considered, is the flank through the backside looking fantastic for a short time there from MG. But, you know, at one time, the, you know, 3 AR meta was a thing, and so it worked out from time to time. That's how the game kind of gets developed. You have to, you know, have different strategies set up. Roster changes obviously come into a number of different facets, a number of different factors. And it seems that MG is obviously responding well, adding in another SMG player. A very solid player at that, Stamino, in place of Pemby. But uh, as it stands, yet again, locking down Bunker. And this, I really can't wait to look at the uh, kind of scoreboard overview when it comes down to this matchup and seeing how many free seconds Midnight Gaming got compared to Mazers, but just because of the factor of them dominating this hard point. This is the hard point where you have to get time on. If not, then you're going to really struggle on the scoreboard, and that obviously goes to show here. The full four-man flank off the beginning of this hill for MG. It takes them a little bit of time, but they're able to kind of rush their way through. They develop a pinch, and they make it look easy as if they'd done it many times before, which, of course, is exactly the case. But uh, take a look at the scoreboard at the top right corner. You see Gizmo having a pretty solid game, currently positive five as it stands at 23 and 18. Frosty, though, on the opposite end after picking up that two piece, currently 10 and 15. And uh, of course, you got Zapdius, Fatal, both playing pretty consistently. But uh, overall time being awarded to Zapdius, 44 seconds out of the hill. And also could add a few kills on top of that four players drop in quick succession. And this is a phenomenal time to make this happen, but take a look at this. As Profizi's on one side, you see Stamino on the opposite end. This spawn could work out in a pinch, and yes, it's going to be Fatal who doesn't realize this is happening. They have to turn around, they have to realize that one is on the flank, they drop Stamino. Profizi's still here, though. There's two guys who actually spawn here, and just like that, the hard point gets broken. And I don't believe that Major had any idea that that was taking place throughout the end of East Road as the second set of rotations will start to fade from view. Zaptius reigning in from above, does take down a few players with that fighter pilot, and also has the artillery barrage. This is absolutely going to spoil the party for the side of Midnight. They have no ability to hop inside that hard point for the most part. They're going to have to enter through that cabin cut. And that's exactly where an STG is already pre-aiming, so they're going to be in a pretty awkward situation for a time. For about 10 to 15 seconds, they had no ability to hop inside the hill. And just like that, we're starting to see the deficit begin to shrink. But here comes the nades. Here comes the shots from MG. Can they respond back? And it looks like Glory starting to go on a streak of his own. Two kills in a row. Three kills dropping for a short time from MG. And just like that, Glory and Co. starting to rally a little bit. Grabbing the last few seconds. Phantoms wins a big battle versus Fatal. So the last few seconds will be granted. Passing the 200 second mark as Profizi drops to the next rotation. At least a solid end to that hill if you are the side of MG. And that's really a majority of major seconds get granted when it came down to that last hard point inside a cave. But kills going down now. Profizi dropping two. Three streak for this man. When we talk about Profizi, right? Known for being up in your face. Very fast place reaction player. Always going to be a thorn in your side. Kind of plays similar to a uh, kind of like an aggro sub is really the definition of Profizi's play. 
It looks like through the back lines, Stamino trying to make his push. Nothing really gets found from it. And we could be seeing the third rotation in a row. Bunker, this has been the one hard point that has absolutely ruined Mazer's game. Can they start to break? Can they finally make something happen? Gizmo, in a pretty nice point of view, trying to get behind enemy lines, but is going to have one player in his line side. Here comes one. Can he find the second? Not able to happen. Two players end up dropping. Zapdius and Fatal not in a position to try and challenge here. But Fatal ends up taking down Stamino regardless. And Provizi is sitting pretty in the hill. Players trying to enter in toward the backside, but less than 20 seconds are needed before this game is closed out. Profizi watching over, ends up taking down one, but no, ends up dropping in total. Play number eight is still going to be here in glory, but he drops as well. And it looks like we could be seeing a successful retake be found here from Mazer. Three players in the hill, spawns in their favor as well as they are going to save the game and now find themselves down after this hard point expires by about less than 20 seconds. And when it comes to the East Road, this is by no means a confidence hard point for anyone. Rotations are nice, and they're going to try to have them at bay for a while, but we talk about as many nades that you're going to have in your classes now, and this is going to be a rough time to lock it down, but eight seconds remain, and they're actually finding the kills through the smoke. They're actually holding them at bay pretty well. Profizi lining it up with two kills. There's the third. He wants the fourth, and his teammate will grab the assistance as Profizi puts the exclamation point on the end of this hard point. As they will win this one 250 to 210. As Midnight Gaming goes storming into his search and destroy, where they've looked. Pretty darn good on it. But MG, right? Talk about a, a solid map for them in total. You see, uh, really, toward the overall scoreline, pretty consistent numbers. Despite that, though, you see Profizi with 2 minutes and 34 seconds inside of the hill from, of course, Mazer Gaming. You see Zapdius at the top of the scoreboard, 38 and 24. Gizmo finishes off 36 and 21. Solid performances from both of those players. We'll go and take a look quickly here at our overall scoreboard. See where this game obviously kind of took a little bit of a turn. Like I said, what I was kind of discussing throughout this entire game was Bunker, 124 to 35. And the game is only lost by 40 seconds, right? You see the advantage that Major has on Cave. You see the advantage that they have on Ruins and the advantage that they have on East Road. They literally won every single hard point but Bunker. And it was in such a dominant way that it overall changes the course of this match. And I know we've been talking about teams kind of practicing heading into CWL Seattle, right? All the practice that you want to have heading into that particular tournament, right? If you're if you're if you're a major gaming, go back, figure out how to break this hard point, figure out how to take a team down in this particular situation, because this is what lost you the game without question. 124 to 35, you won every other hard point. In every situation, you should be winning this game nine times out of ten. And obviously, it just happens to be that one out of ten scenario in that situation. So despite that, though, Major had some good moments. They started to make a little bit of a comeback. We see Gizmo finish off with 38 kills, Zapdius with 36. So it's nice to see that their shots at least are on point for the most part. Uh, but one thing that's going to be interesting to me, to me, the most exciting particular map of this series is going to be the Search and Destroy on St. Marie du Mans. With Midnight. They Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. If you're looking for the UNG $200 minimum, you're in the right place. It's time for map two here on St. Marie Dumas of our current semifinal between Mazer Gaming and Midnight. Of course, MG, aka Midnight, is off a hot game one victory on Arden Forest. They won that one 250 to 210 and now find themselves within one map of the finals. Of course, best of threes all the way around. Once you've won one, you're now one away. Lots, lots of ones involved there. But when it comes down to this game, you do not want to be putting up any breadsticks. Already donuts. It's all about the kills. First bloods are nice. It looks like off the brick of this first round, it will be the sign from Mazer. Getting the bomb down quickly on the A site. Zapdius and Co. Causing a little bit of a wall, essentially, in the front of the map. While well, that's taking place, kills going around the other side of the map as two players begin to drop. It's now going to be a two versus three. Now make it a one versus three. Phantoms inside of mid street. Goes for the dolphin dive, but unfortunately, dolphin dives to his death. 
and Zapier is just a few more bullets to take him down. And overall, flawless execution out of round number one for Mazer Gaming, right? They get the bomb down successfully. They hold it well. They make kind of the early aggressive rush toward the front to kind of eliminate the opposition from hopping into the site. And they hold it well. That's pretty much a perfectly played round on offense when it comes down to the A bomb site. So it looks like we're now hopping with MG to see what they can try and provide as it looks like they're going to be making their way toward the B bomb site. We talk about the new patch, right? The amount of utility that can be rocked as it looks like Nade's coming through, but it looks like it will be Frosty actually, who combines for two kills, totally eliminating this push on toward B from MG. Frosty, a one-man wrecking crew, three kills in a row. Could be silenced though. Glory, the bomb on his back. His phantoms at his side. Phantoms has to hop into the site with, with his teammate here because they're not really sure exactly where to go. Collapse could happen at any moment. Is Glory ready? The shots come in, and now they have to be watching toward the backside. They actually hop out of the site, and perfect timing for them as well. They realize if they hop out of this kind of square position, they know that they can't be pinched. In another situation where Phantoms is left all by himself in a 1v3 situation. And of course, he's going to drop yet again, this time at the hands of Gizmo. But a phenomenal, really, round there coming in from Frosty. We see Midnight trying to establish things early. They get the uh, you know nice kind of first blood with the nade kill. But Frosty kind of holds strong. Right? I believe he has armor, so he doesn't really get affected too much by that grenade. And from there, he ends up finding two kills. And like I said, has a 3v2 advantage. His teammates kind of work it from there. And uh, he remains alive. So him, Zapdius, and Gizmo yet to be taken off the map and are looking pretty decent for one of them to potentially grab those streaks. But yet again, here on offense, Zapdius this time with the bomb in hand. They t toss out the smoke toward that mid-cut to make sure the vision from red is eliminated. And as that currently stands, kind of a, I believe all members separating themselves all throughout the map. Zaptius wins his big gunfight. Now it's going to come down to Fatal. Is he aware of the flank? The jumping shot comes in here from Stamina. It works out very well. Phantoms yet again in the clutch. Unfortunately, tosses the nade. It catches the window. And we'll see how MG can try... And retake here. There goes one and Phantoms. There's your 1v3 for the third time in a row, my friend. And it's just not looking good, really, for MG. Like I said, this is kind of to be not necessarily, not necessarily expected, but you have to really respect the guys on Mazer and with how they've been playing in Search and Destroy. As of recent, they have looked like absolute killers in this game mode for the time and in the past few tournaments as well. Last time around on offense, MG really got spoiled by Frosty, who's currently sitting at 5-0. and zero. Will it happen again? Tossing out the stun, they know everything is clear for now. And based off the offense, they're kind of just sitting pretty, right? They're trying to kind of form a line, wait for the opposition to come to them. They lose. Stamina, who was essentially their hope to find the first blood, he ends up t getting taken down. So from here... Play slow. Hope the enemy plays a little bit too aggressive and try to counter off their mistakes as that seems to be what Glory is attempting right now. Has the sniper rifle toward the B bomb side as he's acting as a bait. Frosty and Glory. A wall separating them. Phantoms actually thinks he spots the boot of Zapdius instead of bottom red. That is exactly the case, but at the same time as Phantoms finds one, it's now going to be up to Profezi. And a one versus three drops one. And it's going to go for the plant, but it looks like it will be Zapdius in the back lines tagging him up. Profezi has a grenade ready to cook. But in the end, he's the one who gets burned. That was awful. But still, Mazer Gaming, I mean, they are just walking away with this game, making it look so simple. Right, an offense and or defense, retaking the bomb site. MG off the start of this round are really relying on stamina to find the first blood for them. They end up playing passively, losing their 1v1 engagements. They're not feeling confident in their fights and heading into a round number five. 
you've got two guys who are collectively 11 and 0. Frosty, Zapdius, both playing lights out. Zapdius has got full streaks, and Frosty is not far away from them by any means. And I love that. Actually, going to toss out quite a bit of utility back up here on B. And if we know anything about Profizi, not one to back down from a fight as he's pulled out his trusty Waff. And they're actually going to be forming a little bit of a pinch. So the Glide Bump comes in. I believe that Planner 5 does not have Mountain attached. So that information is there. And really, this is kind of solid information that's gained from Profizi and Co. from MG because once they don't rush into the B-Bomb site, it's kind of the call-up from Profizi. He's saying, hey, they're not on this site. We kind of have a little bit of an idea. They're probably in the back of their spawn near Winery. And so kind of a collective pinch comes forward. Profizi on one end, two players on the opposite. And like I said, they kind of complete a little bit of a pinch in the back of the base. So solid plays coming in from Major in that situation as they tossed... Basically, every grenade, every tactical, every lethal they had on the floor of the B-bomb side, and granted it acted as a nice distraction, but if you know anything about Profizi, right, not afraid of a fight by any means. Man is so confident that he even has a waff from time to time, but ends up finding a kill with it in that round, but really need to kind of pick things up. A glide bomb does get utilized in that last round to no avail, but Zappy is still has the fighter pilot and also... Has the artillery barrage. Glory, though, finding the first blood off the round, and same thing, Stamino finds a kill onto Frosty. Gizmo trying to even the numbers out. As the offensive team needs to get this bomb planted, and really, if you're in their shoes, just get it down, work from there. It'd be preferred if Glory kind of had it just because of streak's sake, but the work with what they got. Zapdius and Gizmo on opposite sides of the map currently. And as far as streaks are concerned, you can't really use an artillery barrage because you'd like to hop on the defuse unless they can kind of gain information of where these guys are at. But a fighter pilot would be nice, but they have a lot of opportunities to hide. So no streaks to be utilized. Both players are now looking at this point of view, and Zapdius ends up finding two of them. Now it's up to Phantoms. 17 seconds left. Don't waste all your bullets, my friend. And yes, he'll find the kill onto Zapdius. To no avail, it looked incredibly unlikely. That despite holding a huge advantage, a four versus two, that they'd escape with the round. But Phantom's a bullet difference and a bomb head glitch is what will keep them in this game. And that is a very interesting situation that we find ourselves in. Four to two, back to back rounds grabbed here for MG. Still yet to utilize these streaks is Zapdius. Early stuns tossed out. Smoke actually from Zapdius. That's going to try and cause a distraction for the enemy. And I love this play from Zapdius. And as they're playing passive, right, play, what they're really banking on is for both player number eight and player number five to get a little bit too over aggressive and want to go toward the other side. So it's kind of a waiting game right now. Do we see Stamino and Glory rotate or do they stay here? It's really all about how well. Fatal can make it seem as if a push is being made toward the B-bomb site. You see Stamino's starting to bite. Glory, though, still with the sniper rifle. Decides to back up, and here comes the fighter pilot. Once that comes through, it totally catches Glory off guard. It absolutely catches him off guard at the same time. Stamino makes the full flank through mid-street, mid manages to escape with his life, and Gizmo doesn't know where he went. He has no idea where he escaped to. The smoke masks him. And Phantoms, who's sitting inside of Top Red, might have gotten just the most important info of the round. Spots out Frosty. Stamino ends up getting taken down, so it's up to Phantoms and Profizi to clutch it out. Phantoms is aware. Someone's rushing him. Can he find the fight, though? This is such a crucial fight he needs to win. At the same time, Profizi's going for the challenge. He's not able to win it. And Phantoms cannot either. It's five rounds to two now. And you've got to really respect that play coming in from Mazer. A very solid and smart offensive round, right? Because they basically toss as much utility over toward the B site to try and make the enemy think that, hey, we're just making a delayed push toward the B site. When in reality, they've got troops set up just outside of A, waiting for the opposition to hop out of that bomb site, go toward the opposite one because the utility's tossed. But in reality, 
Glory with that sniper rifle, just as soon as he starts to turn around, the fighter pilot comes from above and absolutely destroys any play that could have been made. Artillery barrage still in the back pocket from Zaptius. Excellent streak usage. If you are the side of Mazer, I almost said MG, but technically both teams are MG, right? Midnight Gaming, Mazer Gaming. If I say that, know that I'm referencing probably Midnight, but despite that, though, bomb in the hands of Profizi. Hop again toward the side, and they are so open to allow them to be bombsite to be free. Why? Because they've got an absolute barrage ready to go. Glory ends up getting dropped from it, and now it's just going to delay time. Great timing from Profizi. Knows when it starts to expire, how long it lasts. Hops to the bomb site immediately, and as soon as this bomb gets planted, you're going to see Zapdius try and challenge, or at least make an effort. You see him getting a little bit antsy. Once this round, once that CTF, it's an aggression. Find the headshot, and just like that, all four players expired. Three of them in a matter of a second, as they are erased. And just like that, a dominant search and destroy win here from the boys on Mazer Gaming. As they win this one six rounds to two, and have booked their ticket toward a capture the flag. And I'm actually taking a look at my notes here, and it's going to be actually CTF on London Docks. That one is going to be a, a headache, I think it's fair to say, for both teams, uh, essentially, in this particular matchup. But take a look, though. Zaptius, man. 12 and 2? 12 and 2. Unreal performance in this particular game. And I want to say that even in the last tournament, he was really lighting things up as well. So. Uh, Zaptius, definitely not one that you like to mess with when it comes down to the response and or the search and destroy, was having a heyday in this particular series, as long with the even last kind of few days uh, as it stands. But, of course, take a look there quickly at the search and destroy scorecard. Not really too much to take from it. Mazer, solid beginning. MG looked like they had some potential from time to time, but really offensive plays for Mazer early established a pretty dominant lead. MG from there, a.k.a. Midnight Gaming, excuse me, uh, started to have some problems, couldn't really rebound too much, and really their one round out of their two comes from a huge clutching opportunity where I think it was uh, Phantoms who was in like in a one versus one and somehow nearly went to fight despite having a four versus two advantage. So some moments from Midnight look pretty solid, but overall they've got to be shaking a little bit when it comes down to this next capture the flag. I'm going to kind of save my thoughts, save my predictions when it comes to uh, obviously entering in toward that game, but both teams looking pretty solid as it stands. A pretty solid victory on the hard point for Midnight, but Mazer coming back in the search and destroy, winning this one in just eight rounds of play. A fantastic way to kind of make a statement in this series. Let you guys know that a capture the flag is coming, and they're obviously feeling pretty good about it. So yeah, Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, time for map three. It all ends here. Our current semifinal took place between Midnight and Mazer. Mazer off a hot victory in the search and destroy, won it in just eight rounds of play on St. Marie. But now... Looking toward some London docks. France to England. Maybe the international flavor could get Mazer going. But uh, as it stands right now, of course, winner of this series will face off against the winner of 164-894-846. Something along those lines. It's, it's a random combination of numbers. So we'll face off against the winner of that team and forfeit gaming in the finals. So, of course, a lot on the line. $200 at that. Some cash to be played, and of course, a lot of practice heading in toward Seattle, which I believe both of these teams uh, will be competing at that tournament. Haven't heard official confirmation, but it's fair to say both these teams should be there. Praying that they are, and it looks like Zapdius and Fatal combining for a double inside of fire. And if we know anything about London Docks, it's very fast paced, very quick reaction, and that's going to suit Zapdius very, very well. 5 and 0 start, and I was kind of getting off the um, search and destroy heading into the break, and I was just like kind of astounded at the way that Zapius has been playing for the last really even three tournaments has just been really stellar, essentially. I mean, he has been just destroying every team he's faced off against. He was the reason why Mazer ended up taking last week's tournament, or technically last Thursday's tournament, and uh, starting off this particular hard point, or excuse me, this particular CTF, at 5-0 and zero, is 20 points away from a fighter pilot and nearly grabs it, but Profizi's jump shot is just a little bit stronger. My word, Profizi. Solid shot. But despite that, though, an early flag advantage toward the side of Mazer as they're going to kind of park the bus for now, set up a solid defensive hold, and from there, 
if you're midnight, you gotta rely on these kills. But if you start to fall very fast, just as quickly as you make an offensive push, an offensive one can be started on you. It looks the nade tossed out from Frosty. Can enemy players make the escape? And they will not at all. Four players drop. Only man up right now is going to be Stamino. As he's going to have to kind of cradle himself inside a fire. I believe that's a uh, look at smoke for me, but I guess it was a stun. Getting tossed out there from Gizmo. In response, one from Stamino. And it's a double kill actually coming through from Mazer's MG, aka Midnight Gaming, have to try to credit themselves in the back lines, but Glory finds two. Thankfully from Zapdius, the Glide Bomb will silence him for the time. And off to the races. Can Gizmo get around the corner in time? And it looks like he should be free. Can he make it just around? It looks like player number one, Zapdius, holding strong. This is the one player that you want to be in that situation, watching over your cut as Zapdius is just destroying Midnight Gaming. 10 and 2, four kills in a row, and a flag capture to his name. And really, quite frankly, you could even add him to having two flags. Because if it wasn't for him finding these kills, that second one wouldn't have came home. And now Stamino, yet again, last alive for a short time in this base. Thankfully gets the good timing on the Frosty, and also takes down Gizmo as well. Big plays in the base from Stamino, but little do they know, Fatal is still here. Fatal is still back here. Behind enemy lines. And he's playing spoiler. If they can find at least two kills in succession, he's good to grab it. They find a kill. In his hands right now, you see Gizmo setting up very well in the back of the base. But you look, see that red outline just toward the side is going to be Profizi. Has to play spoiler here. Needs to go big. Drops Fatal. Can he go for the Dolphin Dive? Tries to get it. Gets the melee Dolphin Dive at that. But it's not going to be enough. Play number eight, Stamino is here as well, but gets there just too short. It's heartbreaking moments if you're Midnight Gaming. Granted, you get another five minutes to play, but you were so close from returning that flag. Phenomenal nade there thrown from Profizi, but Frosty gets the better of him. But if there's really anything to take from this first half, it has been Zaptius' performance. 15 and 5 has double the amount of kills as the person in second place in kills for his team. Fatal has 7. It's the second highest kills. Zapdias is 15 and 5. He's got a 3 KD in the semifinals versus a solid team like Midnight Gaming, a team who could easily be making it out of the open bracket in Cebo Seattle. I wouldn't say easily, but you, you, you get my point. Wow, man. 3 to 0 at the half. I know there are preferred side when it, preferred sides rather when it comes into London Docks, but really, and realistically, if you got a guy like Zapdius playing like that, like that, I think any side that Zapdius is on is now, is now preferred. Really, is I think it's honestly disrespectful if I don't go on board with him toward the beginning of this next five minutes. But MG, they need to rebound. Midnight have to do something, right? Need some consistency, need players to perform at a higher level as two make it nearly three drop off the break, and now it's Phantoms in the back, halving to reference toward his spawn. Zapdius has found it, but somehow takes down Phantoms. My word, Zap. He's shooting lightning out of that gun. And there is the fourth flag of the game scored in the second half at, what, 34 seconds? I, I clocked that one in and got my stopwatch out, actually. 17-6 and six for Zapdius. Having a field day. And right now it is a eight-team streak. Glow Frosty with five in a row. About to make it six. Re-challenge coming in here from Zapia should eliminate one. And yes, just like that, Phantoms falls. The pre-fire coming in toward another. Gizmo sitting just inside a claw room trying to go for a flag capture. But just like that, here come the streaks from above. Frosty dropping glory. And this is going to be another flag home. It's about to be 5-0 to zero in favor of Mazer. 
Phantoms, I mean, I mean, they're putting an effort, right? I mean, from time to time, you're seeing some good moments for Midnight. They could, quite frankly, get this flag in. And I don't want to say it's too little too late, but, I mean, this should have been happening in the beginning of the match. This this should have been the sneaky plays. Phantoms coming in the back lines should have already happened. The streaks from above from Frosty don't take down Phantoms. And he will be able to score this one home. So at least a little bit of light if you are the side of Midnight. You're not known for the light, of course, but... Like Strangers in the Night, trying to bring this one back. Really have got to catch the side of Mazer off guard. But that's all going to start from taking down this man, Zapius. He has literally been destroying your team. Not just in this map one. Or not, excuse me, not in this map three, but in really the entire series, right? Finishes off with 36 kills and a heart point loss. Finishes 12 and 2 in the search and destroy. At one point in this game was 15-3. and three. I mean, he is shooting lasers. Like I said, he's shooting lightning. He's Zaptius. What else does he shoot? But 5-1, to one, time starting to expire. Two-minute warning. If you're midnight, you've got to turn up the pace. It's time for these high-risk, high-reward decisions. Profizi, fast-paced player. Definitely, you think, a map that would suit his play style. Currently 6-15. You see Stamina out, currently sitting at 8 and 14. Phantoms and Glory, of course, both negative, but not playing, you know, bad by any means. And while I've been highlighting Zapdius, right, Glowfrosty's casually sitting at 15 and 6 as well. So you've got one guy who's nearly triple negative, and you've got one guy who's nearly double negative on this team. So Slang, definitely one to witness if you are or will be, rather, facing off against this team in the finals because it looks like this game is done. It looks like this series is about to come to a close. Fredo nearly escaping with that flag. Ends up dropping just outside a closet in a big 1v1 gunfight that, of course, goes Zapdius' way. Takes down at Stamino. And this is about to be the sixth flag unless Profizi has anything to say about it. Frosty watching over for a squad mate. The Dolphin Dives comes forward. An insult to injury if you are the boys from Mazer. And I got to say, right, I mean, this is a very surprising victory to see versus a team who I thought probably has the advantage coming into a capture the flag. I've not really seen too much of Mazer in CTF that I can remember. I know they're a solid respawn team, especially in Hardpoint. They're fit for Search and Destroy too. But this is a very scary result if you're facing off against this team either in the open bracket at Seattle or really just throughout the rest of this tournament just because these guys are well-suited in just about every single game mode. And granted, it's taken them some time to kind of find this particular form, but when you've got Zapdius slaying like this, when you've got Frosty finding kills with the STG from that close of range and from that far as well, you got to hand it to them, right? Just playing on a different level, and they are just lighting it up here at the end. Gold Frosty ends up taking down Fatal, but just because his shot is so darn good. 22 and 7 for Frosty. Zapdius, 23 and 12. As Mazer will secure their spot here in our finals for tonight's tournament. And speaking more on this Mazer gaming team, right? They end up winning our last tournament. Incredibly solid roster. They ended up taking down uh, the ex-Lethal team in the finals uh, with Jet Li added. So it was Rambi, Major Maniac, and Teddy Rex along with Jet Li. Ended up taking that series in a pretty dominant way. They destroyed the hard point. And they actually ended up winning that search and destroy 6-2 to two as well. So, and Mazer Gaming, they are looking scary to say the least. And kind of take a look very uh, very briefly at our capture the flag. Kind of break them. Three flags in the first half. Three flags in the second half. And when you've got like guys like Zapdius and Frosty who are literally eliminating the enemy team, it's going to be difficult to take them down. But kind of giving more credit to Zapdius, right? Finishes off the hard point game with 36 kills. I think he goes like 36 and like maybe 19, 36 and 20, something along those lines. Plays very well, right, the hard point. Um, Search and Destroy finishes off 12 and 2. And the CTF finishes off 23 and 12. Frosty ends up finishing off 22 and 7. And the capture the flag. So this team, man, 
you cannot sleep on these guys, right? They win the prior tournament. They're looking like they can definitely make a two-peat happen. But, of course, in order to make that happen, they need to take down the squad who will meet them in the finals. And let's go and take a look here at our bracket see how things are currently lining out. As it looks like it is still 1-6-4-4-9-8-6 who are <laughs> facing off against Forfeit Gaming, of course, for the 1-6-4 uh, team. That is storied Deox, Tiny, and Fastball. And uh, for Forfeit Gaming, an official roster is Emruiz, Reviction, Drama, and Brack. Personal predictions, I'm thinking we probably see Forfeit Gaming make their way here just kind of based off of it's a team, it's an organization. They're probably scrimming or at least practicing, rather, heading into Seattle, to Seattle as well. So definitely be taking a look out for Forfeit Gaming. My man Brack could be in the finals here. And uh, Brack has actually faced off against Mazer quite a bit, even in the finals from time to time, where he previously was in a squad known as Vex. They actually end up taking three tournaments in a row, completing a three-peat in our uh, $200 minimum tournaments. That squad ends up going their separate ways uh, after losing actually one tournament uh, to Hydra, actually, funny enough. So that just goes to show the um, the lore that Landon knows about these $200 minimums. I've been, I've been writing down, I mean, hey, let's look at this really quickly, right? I can't get a close-up on this, but this entire notebook, those are all series from the $200 minimums, and this is just this is just hardcore knowledge that is in my brain. Don't ask me why I just tried to headbutt my notebook, but... Uh, I mean, hey, it's just it's just all up here. It's just all up here. But, uh, of course, congratulations to Mazer for at least right visiting their second grand final in a row. Can they make it a two-peat? Obviously, is the question to be asking as it currently stands. But we're still waiting, obviously, on the result between 164 and 4 for Gaming. If you guys haven't done so already, make sure to tweet out the stream, twit.tv slash UMG events. And if you guys are a little bit bored during the commercial breaks from time to time, of course, just waiting on this other semi-farm to take place, this is our YouTube channel, right? YouTube.com slash UMG events or slash UMG gaming. We have a number of different videos kind of going up. Recently added a series called the Esports Dispatch, which kind of acts as a you know, personal show that I like to do to kind of bring up current quality topics. We've been discussing Roster Mania. We're going to be talking Seattle as well. Coming up.